Hello and welcome to the news from Bahia International. I am Hamad Yusuf. A telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Both leaders reviewed the historical bilateral relations and their steady development in various fields. Discussions also focused on the importance of a diplomatic solution to settle differences between countries through dialogue and peaceful means to avoid further escalation. Discussing developments in Ukraine, both leaders emphasized the importance of concerted international efforts to ensure permanent and comprehensive peace and guarantee that interests of all parties and their national security. His Majesty the King underlined the importance to take into consideration providing humanitarian aid and services to civilians in Ukraine and the need for all countries to assume their duty of funding the humanitarian operations announced by the United Nations according to the principles of human solidarity. During the call, cooperation in combating the spread of the coronavirus pandemic was discussed, including taking into account the successful use of Russian vaccines in the kingdom. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. During the meeting, His Majesty the King was briefed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on the major achievements of completing the implementation of the Royal Directives of providing 40,000 housing units. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for completing the directives, hailing His Royal Highness's continuous efforts to achieve further progress and growth through ambitious developmental initiatives and projects especially housing ones, which aim to provide the essentials of decent living for citizens. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the efforts of the Minister of Housing, the Ministry of Staff, and all the government authorities in implementing many housing projects and providing initiatives and solutions in cooperation with the private sector to serve citizens and provide them with decent livelihood. His Majesty affirmed the continuous keenness on providing all citizens' needs and requirements to achieve their aspirations for decent livelihood, especially suitable housing. He affirmed that citizen satisfaction is the main goal that His Majesty is keen on achieving as Bahraini citizens are the main pillar for the development and growth process in the kingdom. His Majesty the King received from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister a commemorative gift on the occasion of completing the implementation of the Royal Directives of providing 40,000 housing units. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received His Holiness Reverend Michael Lewis, Archbishop of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Cyprus and the Gulf of the Episcopal Church of the Jerusalem and the rest of the Middle East at Safriya Palace on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom. His Majesty welcomed the guests and praised his efforts in enhancing the values of tolerance and coexistence. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain is proud of its history of coexistence, bringing together people of different religions and faiths, living together in unity, respecting one another. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's keenness to instill peace, mutual respect and keenness to welcome everyone. His Majesty highlighted Bahrain's various initiatives to contribute to enhancing the values of tolerance and dialogue amongst religions and pointed out to the role of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence in this regard and its many achievements. His Majesty discussed with his guests a number of issues that contribute to spreading the culture of dialogue and religious tolerance and abiding by the moderation approach. The Reverend expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for opening the new Catholic Cathedral in the Kingdom of Bahrain recently, which reflects His Majesty's care and support for coexistence between different religions and sects, ensuring religious freedoms for all faiths, and spreading the values of brotherhood, coexistence, and tolerance among peoples. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 7 of 2022 on the environment. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 18 of 2022 appointing Maryam Ali Hamad al Minasir as Director of the Communication Directorate at the Ministry of Health. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 19 of 2022 appointing Isa Mohammed Isa Al Jaban as Director of the Directorate of Criminal Procedures at the Public Prosecution. His Royal Highness issued Edict 20 of 2022 appointing the following directors at the Urban Planning and Development Authority. Noura Mohammed Hassan Bouchiri, Director of the Detailed Planning Directorate. Iman Naji Qasim Ali Naji, Director of the Directorate of the Plans Execution. Firas Abbas Amin Abu Amin, Director of the Directorate of Infrastructure and Services Planning. And Sheikh Hamad bin Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Director of the Directorate of Urban Development. The Council of Representatives held its weekly meeting chaired by its speaker, Fuziya Zainal. The Council approved a draft law on the application of the provisions of the agreement between Bahrain's government and the United Nations Development Program. The Council also approved a draft law ratifying the Arab Customs Cooperation Agreement. 
under the patronage of the Vice President of the UAE, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The seventh edition of the Knowledge Summit was organized in cooperation with the UNDP with the participation of a number of ministers and senior officials. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naimi, participated in a discussion session as part of the summit and spoke about Bahrain's experience in achieving education sustainability during the pandemic thanks to its important infrastructure. He affirmed that during the pandemic, all measures were taken into account to ensure the effectiveness of remote learning for all stages and were aired on the television and YouTube channels to reach 14 channels, including a channel for students with special needs. The minister added that these efforts earned Bahrain an international recognition, pointing at the same time to the prominent role played by the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and communication technology in the field of education to motivate individuals to submit initiatives and modern technological projects aimed at ensuring the spread of education for all. The minister also talked about the challenges that the world will face in the future, such as the pandemic and other disasters, calling for benefiting from the positive results, especially at the educational level, to overcome any similar circumstances. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Ahmedan, stressed the government's keenness on improving citizens' standards of living. He paid tribute to His Majesty the King for his royal care, hailing the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He commended the directors of His Royal Highness to double the distribution of social assistance allowances to those entitled to social security and a disability pension during the holy month of Ramadan. According to figures released by the minister, the move will benefit around 17,000 Bahraini families, recipients of social allowances, as well as up to 13,000 persons with physical disabilities, with a budget exceeding 6 million Bahraini dinars. Hamidan announced that the payouts would be deposited to the recipient's bank accounts as soon as possible in conjunction with the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Zayani, patronized the opening ceremony of an Ansari Group's Mektab co-working space project. Zayani hailed the continuous efforts of the major industrial companies and their tireless and prominent efforts to develop their business and support the national economy, which reflect its progress, growth and prosperity. During the visit, the industry minister toured the company's work place during which he was briefed on the workflow of the Mektab project and the services the company provides to serve individuals and companies, which is one of the projects through which it seeks to attract entrepreneurs, which provides a great opportunity for small and medium-sized enterprises to focus on and develop their projects without worrying about the cost of establishing a private headquarters for their companies. As Zayani expressed appreciation for the national companies that seek to attract entrepreneurs and help young people in this field to develop their businesses and private institutions that play a prominent role in the economic development process by providing facilitations to project owners at a lower cost, which helps achieve Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. Zayani also affirmed the ministry's keenness on supporting and encouraging these national projects and companies that contribute to the development of the commerce and industry sectors in Bahrain and enhance partnership between the public and private sectors. He commended the role played by the government to support national companies to attract quality projects that reflect positively on the local economy and constitute a breakthrough in regional and global markets. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Halil Ansari, reiterated Bahrain's commitment to support international efforts to invest in the developmental capacity of women and their societies, especially to enable them to adapt to climate change, environmental risk and disasters, and to remove structural barriers and gender gaps as part of the Global Development Project Sustainable. This came during her speech at the meetings of the 66th session of the Commission of the Status of Women, where she expressed the Kingdom of Bahrain's aspiration to intensify international efforts to discuss developments and issue priority recommendations with a focus on best practices that would support the advancement of women at all levels to support to achieve gender equality and empower all women, especially in the context of climate change, through developing policies and programs to reduce the risks of natural disasters. She added that the way to achieve this lies in the continuous and integration of women's policies and support for their competitive participation in qualitative and promising fields in light of the transformations taking place in global economies. Al Ansari stressed the importance of integrating women's needs at the global level in environmental and climate related issues through the development of regional indicators linking gender balance, climate change, water and food security and ecosystems to meet the goals and objectives of sustainable development.
The Consumer Protection Directorate is celebrating the Gulf Consumer Protection Week from the 13th to the 17th of March. As part of the celebration, we would like to highlight one of the services provided by Consumer Protection Directorates under the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, which is the Promotion and Sale Campaign Permits. To speak more about that, we are joined on the phone by the Chief of Promotion and Discount Section at the Consumer Protection Directorate, Ms. Rawan Ali Janahi. Hello, Ms. Rawan. What role does the Consumer Protection Directorate play with regards to promotional and sale campaigns in Bahrain. Hello, good evening. Uh, the Consumer Protection Directorate has a supervisory role over the market. It monitors the promotional and sale campaigns conducted by all commercial entities across all sectors. Based on resolution number 51 for the year 2007 regarding discount campaigns and resolution number one for the year 1993 regarding promotional campaigns, the Consumer Protection Directorate uh, also organizes the process through issuing a license to conduct these campaigns. Starting a campaign without obtaining a proper license is considered a violation. The application process is a very simple online application. The commercial entity wishing to conduct a promotional or sale campaign may visit the Ministry of Industry, Commerce or Tour and Tourism's website uh, or even the Kingdom of Bahrain's national portal Bahrain.bh and choose the service promotional and sale campaign request. The applicant must uh, make sure to provide all necessary documents and fulfill all requirements to obtain the permit. These requirements uh, are explained on the website. In addition, the applicant is free to contact the promotion and discount section within the Consumer Protection Directorate through the email promotion underscore inquiries at moic.gov.bh, which is also available on the website. The CPD also coordinates with the Inspection Directorate uh, within the Ministry to conduct random visits to commercial entities who are having promotional or sale campaigns and make sure the actual promotion or sale campaign is in accordance with what was applied. Uh, that is why it is important that all commercial shops uh, display their licenses on their shop uh, showcase to avoid violations during these random inspection visits. And Ms. Rawan, what are the types of promotion or sale applications that you receive as a directorate? Uh, obviously, there are many types of campaigns. Sale or discount campaigns are one category. They involve part sale or on selected items or all, all items. You have clearances and bazaars, which are sales campaigns conducted outside the actual shop premises. Uh, sale or discount campaigns are mainly reducing the price of an item for a specific time period. Uh, the prices are calculated based on a range of discount percentages, for example, from 10 to 90, or you see sometimes uh, the poster mentions up to 80 or up to 75. For the promotional campaigns, which are basically all other types of campaigns that don't fall under the sale uh, campaign category. For example, you have the special offers, the flat uh, discount rate, uh, buy one, get one, buy two, get one, free gifts or vouchers. You have the scratch and win campaigns, open and win campaigns, uh, raffle draws on prizes such as cars, electronics, cash, and uh, the other prices. And you have um, the other types. Uh, they involve, for example, spin the wheel competitions that involve voting or judging panel or any other new concept or mechanism created by a commercial entity. Ms. Rawan, we wish your directorate the best of luck. Chief of Promotion and Discount Section at the Consumer Protection Directorate, Ms. Rawan Ali Janahi, thank you for joining us.